Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of the Joe Palmetto Law Show, where we will analyze an encounter between the police and a sovereign citizen. The police department involved is the Greer Police Department out of South Carolina. Um, the, the sovereign citizen, as you will see, is an individual who does not come out and identify himself as a sovereign citizen, but as many of them do, he uses a lot of the language and tactics that the sovereign citizens use. Uh, compared to my prior analyses and episodes uh, involving sovereign citizens, I'm going to change this format up a little bit. Today, we are going to watch the episode, and then afterwards, I am going to do my commentary on the Sovereign Citizen Encounter. The video itself is about uh, seven minutes long. I'm gonna do about five minutes of commentary afterwards, so please stay tuned uh, for the entire video so that uh, you can see my commentary and my analysis. The full video of this encounter, which is over 20 minutes long, will be in the description. Now, as we watch this encounter, I want you to pay attention to three things that will help you uh, understand my analysis more. Number one, I want you to listen to the police officer's justifications for their actions. Number two, I want you to listen to the case law that the police officer cites. And number three, I want you to pay attention to the sovereign citizen's subtle tactics to try to disengage and get out of the encounter. So stay tuned for the full video. If you like this content, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, share, and comment. Any one of those are free and easy ways to support my content. Uh, it helps me get a higher ranking in Google and YouTube. It lets me know people are watching, and I want to know that people are watching and enjoying my videos so that I will be incentivized to create more. So please enjoy. Hey, how are you today? How are you today? I'm Corporal Shrad at the Greer Police Department. How are you? Okay. Is there any reason why you're videotaping? I'm just curious. You're not in any kind of trouble. There's nothing here other than we got called and told that you were walking around the parking lot. So, any particular reason for it? No, you're not going to answer? So we're just going to have a stare off because I'm recording you and you're recording me? Is that what we're going to do? Do you have your ID on you? Do I do anything wrong? Well, you're recording a suspicious activity, which puts this into a category of suspicious activity, which means that a Terry versus Ohio, I can detain you until I can determine or deny that there's any criminal activity going on. I would. There, there's already a call on it, so yes, so it would. Is that a or misdemeanor? That's a misdemeanor. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I can't believe you sat here live. Yep. Go ahead and give me your ID for uh, me, please. You to the scene? I am a supervisor. I need another one. Okay. I need a lieutenant or somebody else. Okay. 301 315. He's requesting a supervisor above me. Actually, actually, I'm going to do this type of thing. Okay. Yeah. I'm just curious. I mean, I mean, if you're not doing any criminal activity, there's nothing to worry about. So why are you asking my ID? Because you're not answering me. And when you're not answering me, how do I know you're not filming this parking lot to come shoot it up? It's the Fifth Amendment, right? So I can check on that if it's suspicious. And a part of that checking is to identify you. So if I can get your ID. A felony or misdemeanor? Again. Name, badge number? Sergeant Forrest, 301. How Good. How can I help Well, he contacted me for my ID for no reason. So I need a supervisor to let him know that, you know, without even trying to commit, I'll have to give my ID. Well, he actually got a call on you. Well, then a, what, what crime have I committed? Well, so anytime somebody calls in and reports that they can give me, it's a misdemeanor. Uh, it's the new one, but he asked. Oh, me, okay, thank you. So he said it was a misdemeanor. 
So now we have a conflict on which one it is. We don't have a conflict at all. We have a conflict with the regular actors. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Taping on parking lots in the day, stay and age. That's fine. Whoa. That's fine. You ain't got to whoa nothing. Whoa. What's your name and badge number? Uh, my badge number is 201. It's Whoa. Lieutenant Hope. Whoa. H-O-L-C-O-M-B-E. Now, let me have an ID. This, this is the intimidation factor yeah, Let right me here. have an ID, please. An ID. An ID. an ID, an ID, an ID. You're under Terry versus Ohio. You got to give them your ID. Failure to uh, interfering with police. I ask you for an ID. What kind of you got an ID? Have you got an ID? What kind of ID? Have you got an 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 ID? Have you Yes, sir. It is a crime. What crime there. have I committed to me? Anytime there's a suspicious oh, person that's going to be a crime. You see your ID. Whoa. You, got, you got the count of three whoa. or you're going to jail. You got to see. I got one hand on one. One. Whoa. Two. Don't show me. You're under yeah. arrest. Whoa. You're now under arrest. Sir, you got your ID on you? Sir, you got your ID on you? Um, I like to insult my sister's name and not speak with anybody so I get a lawyer friend too. Ask him for ID. That's, that's not right. actually, uh, not the That's, a, that's a right to stay in jail. That's a right to stay in jail because if we don't have an ID and name and everything, then you stay in jail until we figure out who you are. So you can tell us who you are or you can stay in jail. What, what, what kind of thing? Huh? You were interfering with the police. What crime did I commit? Interfering with the police. I was interfering. Yes, you were. You guys came and approached me. Yes, sir. And I asked yes, you for an ID. And what crime have I committed? Interfering with the police. What crime? Interfering with the police. What crime? For you suspecting for interfering? Listen to me. Listen to me, because I know you're not deaf. I don't got to listen to you. Interfering with no, the police. I was not. Yes, you were. No, I was not. Yes, you were. No, I was. And you know I was. Don't worry about it. Well, I'm, I'm not, not worried about it. it. I, I do this all the time. That's fine. I've been in South Carolina, North Carolina, and Georgia doing this. Well, guess what? You know my property's supposed to stay with me. Ahead, you know my property's supposed to stay with me. You Go know ahead, that, right, Carl? All right. So you got on body camera, Lieutenant uh, Holcomb does not want to bring my property seat. with me. Oh, now you want to bring it. There you go. Now you know he's recording. I heard you say something. We got a call um, that he was walking through filming the Century Insurance parking lot and then filming our parking lot. I guess he filmed Hemrick when he drove by, so I got out. I started talking to him. I just wouldn't answer me at all. Just, what's your name, badge number? So and I said, you're not doing anything wrong at this point if you're just filming, but, you know, we got a call on you. It's no, suspicious activity. Yeah, yeah. This is what's your reason for doing it. He wouldn't answer me. Mm, what crime have I committed? Because I said, okay, well, now. And I told him, I said, Terry versus Ohio, now you're being suspicious, so I can detain you and I need to see your ID. What crime have I committed? He doesn't have any ID on him. No wallet, or nothing. So uh, it's probably going to be that guy from Fowler Brothers that Brent got out with that time. Uh, I'll look it up on the Intel side and see. That's probably what it's going to be. So he brought up Terry for the other time. No, I'm the one that brought it up. Yeah. 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 Why I was at that point. We moved from friendly conversation. Then you're doing a private facility as well. What's that? If you want to put me on it, that's fine. Okay. Okay, so that's the video. As you can see, the police ended up detaining and arresting our sovereign citizen. A few facts that are in the rest of the video that are important to my analysis are as follows. They do end up taking him back to the police station and uh, putting him into jail. What you would see is 
the officer, I don't know if he contacts uh, the district attorney or if he contacts a higher up in the police department, but they discuss why are they detaining him. And the, I believe the charge that they, they, they wish to detain him under is interference with police. Every state is a little bit different, so we will get into that in a second. Um, but they do decide to charge him with interfering with the police. I don't know how long they detained him. Uh, the video doesn't state. Another important uh, item is that they do end up finding out his name. They find a bank card on his person and they identify him through the bank card. So they do end up finding his name. So let's walk through what happened here. The individual is in a, a parking lot uh, and he's videotaping the surroundings. So let's just use a little bit of common sense here. Uh, you see someone out in a, a parking lot walking around in circles. This is what the report said. Someone called the police on this gentleman, walking around in circles and videotaping the area. You will hear the police uh, state in the rest of the video, another important fact, that surrounding that parking lot is a daycare, the police station itself, a fire department, and multiple other businesses. So an individual walking around a parking lot with a video camera, okay, on his phone, he could be casing it out in order to commit some sort of crime. Who knows? But in this day and age, you hear one of the officers say, it's reasonable that that's suspicious activity. So the police get a call, uh, the first officer arrives and engages this man and uh, asks him what he is doing. Uh, the individual won't state what he is doing. Stop right there. He doesn't necessarily have to do that. Where he, where he kind of messes up is later on in the interaction when the officer asks him who he is and he refuses to identify himself. At that time, he says, what have I done? What kind of crime have I committed? Why are you asking me questions? Blah, blah, blah. After he pulls all the, the normal sovereign citizen stuff, get, what's your name? What's your badge number officer? Get me a supervisor. Th those things, they're, they're sort of distraction devices. They may actually work once in a while. This officer didn't back down though. He said, I am, I am conducting this investigation under Terry versus Ohio. This is a very important case. We learn about this case in law school. Anybody who takes a criminal procedure class is gonna learn about Terry versus Ohio. It created the standard for what's called in, in lawyer parlance and, and in the courts, a Terry frisk. What that court case says is that the police can stop an individual and frisk an individual without probable cause. Okay, probable cause is a standard that's up here. The only standard that the police need to conduct the stop and frisk is reasonable suspicion. Now, I'm gonna read you the definition, I'm gonna read you some quick definitions here. Okay, so uh, the, the probable cause and reasonable suspicion are, are they're, they're different, but they're closely related. I'm going to read these definitions to you. I'll be honest, in my opinion, what I've seen in a lot of case law, there's really, there's really, there's not that much difference between them, but it honestly depends on the specific facts. So with, re, with probable cause, okay, courts usually find probable cause when there is a reasonable basis for believing that a crime may have been committed or when evidence of the crime is present in a place to be searched. So the police need to have a reasonable, a reasonable belief that a crime has been committed and or a reasonable, reasonable belief that there is evidence of a crime. The, the belief that a crime has been committed would be used to effectuate an arrest. The belief that there is evidence of, of a crime will be used to effectuate a search. Now, probable cause is what is used to justify search warrants, which could be the search of a house, the search of a vehicle, or the search of a person. 
Reasonable suspicion is a lower standard, and that is the standard that is required for a Terry frisk. Reasonable suspicion is uh, a, a court should not look at whether or not an officer has a hunch that a crime has been committed, but to the specific reasonable inf inferences which he is entitled to draw from the facts in light of his experience. And one of the tag words used in the law is articulable facts. So the police just need some way to articulate that there is suspicion that a crime has been committed. In this particular case here, the, you hear the officer citing when they're arguing with the sovereign citizen that a call was made, that he was walking around videotaping the area, that there's a school near, or I'm sorry, a daycare nearby and the kids play in this area. That alone is likely enough for reasonable suspicion. Those are part articulable facts. Those are facts that the, the police can rely on. They got to have something. They can't just walk up to someone walking down the street when there's been no call or no sort of suspicious activity like videotaping an area over and over again. Uh, I, I, I got to give it to the police here. They, they had reasonable suspicion. So uh, that gives them the authority to stop the individual and frisk him. Now, the reason this escalates into this sovereign citizen getting arrested is because he refuses to give his name. Now, you're saying, Attorney Cho, that's ridiculous. How can someone be arrested for just for not giving their name? Well, let me tell you, in about 24, I believe I had it written down, uh, in about 24 states in the United States, they have statutes, okay, which are called stop and identify statutes, where the police, if, if they have that reasonable suspicion, can stop someone and can ask them to identify themselves. Now, this, these laws have been challenged in, in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has said that they are legal. These laws are legal. They are legal uh, because they want to give uh, law enforcement enough tools to do their job. But the reason they don't violate the Fourth Amendment um, is because identifying yourself is not seen by the United States Supreme Court as an unreasonable intrusion on your privacy. The interesting thing about these statutes is that they only require that you give your name. So you don't have to provide an ID card to the police. You don't have to give them some sort of paper identification, but you, you don't have to give them your address, your phone number, other identifying factors, but you do have to give them your name. This sovereign citizen in this situation likely could have avoided arrest and diffused the situation if he if he had given the police his name if they had arrested him after that okay it likely would have been an unlawful arrest or an unlawful detention and it would have been very difficult for the police to charge him with anything criminal however 24 states have these stop and frisk statutes okay other states likely have variations on this such as interference with police so my assumption is in and this took place in South Carolina is that South Carolina has a law interfering with police and in that statute it involve it requires an individual to provide their identification um, you know the the opinion on this uh, wasn't super favorable by the Supreme Court. They did hold that these statutes these statutes were legal. However, there are instances where giving your name uh, could incriminate you. And and on, in the United States, under the Fifth Amendment, you do not have to incriminate yourself. There's a self incrimination protection. So. If giving your name would incriminate you, you do not have to give your name to the police. Now, that case law, that area of case law is undeveloped, but 
I, I think it's, it, it, it may be uh, the way to think about this is, um, you know, if you're not doing anything wrong, then there's no reason for you to not give the police your name. If you're up to no good, then you're probably going to resist giving your name. And that's why the police are going to take it further. And that's why they're going to prosecute you under these statutes. Uh, and these statutes are perfectly legal. So it's an interesting legal analysis in this case. The, the officers walk up, they engage the sovereign citizen. He does his usual tactics. What's, what's your badge number? What's your name? Call your supervisor. Kind of funny here. The officer goes, oh, well, I am the supervisor. Uses the normal distraction tactics. But this officer was pretty on point with the law. He says, why are you stopping me? He said, suspicious activity. It's justified under Terry versus Ohio, which it is. All the officer needs to do a stop and frisk is read reasonable suspicion. The reasonable suspicion here is that the individual is walking around the parking lot videotaping an area where there are kids, police department, fire fire departments. This day and age, who knows what he was doing. Uh, could be something crazy on that cell phone. You hear the police officer mention that later on. So the, the officers established the right to stop and frisk, okay, and to even ask further questions. He then, uh, escalates it, asks the individual to identify himself. If he had identified himself, the officer may have run a background check, given him a lecture, and possibly let him go. Perhaps not. He still could have arrested him, but, but it would have likely been an unlawful arrest, and anything that would have happened after that would have not been able to be used in a court of law. Regardless, uh, officer asks him for his name, he refuses to give his name as simple identification. At that point in time, he is in violation of a statute and the officer is justified in arresting and detaining this man and they can even charge him with that crime, meaning he would sit in jail until he was arraigned. Um, I do want to point out a couple interesting tactics that this sovereign citizen used. Um, he asked, the officer, he asked the officer if he was a supervisor, and this officer said, yes, I'm a supervisor. He said, well, call, an, call another supervisor. So I'm thinking to myself, what is he going to say when this other supervisor arrives? So the other supervisor arrives, and he had, he had a clever response to that supervisor. He said, uh, he said, why did you ask for me to be here? And he says, look, I wanted another. He goes, I'm not doing anything wrong. This officer came up and contacted me. I want somebody to tell this other officer that I'm not doing anything wrong and that he has no justification here. Now, of course, that officer backs up the other officer because he did have some legal justification here. The individual had refused to give his name, but in the absence of, of an actual crime, Let's say that this uh, the first officer didn't have any justification for taking the actions that he did. Bringing that supervisor in uh, puts a puts a degree uh, 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 puts a sort of check on that officer because he may be doing something wrong and not even know about it. Well, let's bounce it off a second head. Let's bounce it off a second individual. Now, by playing that little game, the sovereign citizen is escalating the situation and increasing his likelihood that he is going to be arrested by the police. Uh, but it's a bit of a clever tactic. Sometimes you want to have two minds uh, to bounce something off of. And it, it actually gives extra legitimacy to the officer's actions because there's now two of them telling him what the interpretations of the law are. Uh, I thought the officers made a, a very smooth arrest there. He, he didn't try to, uh, the sovereign citizen didn't really try to resist, uh, but, you know, they, they trapped him in a good way, made the arrest without him dropping his phone, put him in handcuffs, uh, etc. cetera. Um, Oh, another diversionary tactic the sovereign citizen used was he said, is this a misdemeanor or a felony? Oh, no, you're wrong. It's a felony. Oh, no, you're wrong. It's a misdemeanor. Look, sir, it doesn't matter whether it's a misdemeanor or a felony. If you're committing a misdemeanor or a felony, they can arrest you on both of those. And in fact, they could arrest and detain you on a disorderly conduct, which is a summary charge. In Pennsylvania, that's the lowest uh, charge, a summary charge. 
So, you know, this sovereign citizen who was walking around a parking lot, I thought it presented an interesting opportunity uh, to analyze the law and when you have to give your name. In most states, you are going to be required to give your name. Doesn't mean you have to give additional identifying information. Now, uh, if you have a problem e even giving your name, you better prepare to, be get, to, to get arrested. Okay, uh, but my advice is to give your name and then you do have a right to silence, but give your name, identify yourself, and then assert your right to silence. The police may still arrest you, but it may protect you from prosecution later on. But give them your name. You are violating the law in most states by not giving your name. So I hope you enjoyed this sovereign citizen analysis. Uh, we learned a little bit about stop and frisk here and uh, tune in for my, my further episodes. If you enjoy my content, subscribe to my channel, like this video, uh, share this video, and leave me a comment. All of those help me get positive feedback from YouTube, help me grow my audience. The bigger my audience gets, the more videos that I'm gonna keep coming. Also, I am going to experiment with different formats. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this format. Uh, Joe Pometo Law signing off. Thank you.